All right, so now I'll talk about uh, installing the plastic tank adapter. And uh, I really like this tank adapter. It, it is a good product and uh, it uses pretty thick plastic. So uh, let's just jump right into it. The equipment that you're gonna need to properly install this thing is gonna be, um, we have an MA320 epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Uh, tongue depressors are going to make this installation nice because uh, they help with spreading that epoxy around into some of those hard to reach cracks and you're saving getting it all over your hands. Um, and then the other item that you'll need, this is a bolt down kit and what this includes is a couple of different items. It includes a, uh, a sealing compound or sealing material uh, known as a mastic tape and what this is used for is this uh, is really sticky stuff. It's almost like tar. Um, kind of reminds me of the consistency of like a fruit roll up or something like that. And um, basically how this works is this is put on the bottom of the plastic t uh, ring here. So you've got a little bit of space between the bolt hole and the edge here. And basically what you do is you run that mastic material on the inside of those bolt holes all the way around. And the reason that you use this material is that even with the porosity of uh, the concrete surface, this is going to give you a really good seal because this stuff holds up in almost any environment. Uh, it's pretty much impermeable and it's, it's going to give you a really strong seal if you install it properly. The other item that's in this bolt down kit, yeah, I'm sure you were wondering, uh, bolts. Um, and these are actually just expansion bolts, quarter inch expansion bolts. And the way that these operate is when you've got your concrete tank, uh, what I recommend you do before you even get started on bolting or drilling or anything like that is clean the area up as best you can. Ideally, you would excavate out around the tank uh, you know, within a reasonable degree, maybe four or six inches. That way you're not getting dirt in the tank and, and things like that. Um, and then once you do that, it's a good idea to come back with like your shop vac or or something along those lines and try to get a lot of that fine dirt and so forth out of the way. If you don't have that available, then just as best you can clean that area up and make it so that that mastic isn't gonna have a bunch of stuff wedged in between it when you bolt it down. And then the next step you're gonna wanna do is take this plastic ring and then with, uh, with like a pencil or a Sharpie or something, you can mark your bolt hole locations. Uh, and that's where these, these bolts are all gonna go. And uh, once you've got your bolt hole locations marked, you'd pull this guy out and using a quarter inch masonry drill bit, you would uh, drill your holes where it's marked. Uh, you only need to drill about a half to three quarters of an inch deep. And then you would take your expansion bolts and drop those into the hole. Now, a little tip I'll share with you. When you're working with expansion bolts, uh, you have to, a lot of times you have to kind of tap them into place because you want a relatively tight fit. You don't want them to just pull out of there. So what I do to protect these threads, if you have to tap them into place, is you put the, the nut on just barely, so it's on the top couple of threads, almost level with this little bit of extra metal that's here. Uh, and what that's gonna allow you to do is when you're tapping on that, it's gonna just give it a little bit more to hold on to, so you're less likely to damage or bend the bolt. Um, so that's just a little tip, something that we've learned over the years uh, to do. So once you've got that done, you're basically all set. You've got your bolts in place, those are sticking up, those are installed, and you're ready for the actual installation. Um, what I recommend a person use is maybe a little bit of acetone. Uh, if you don't have acetone handy, even some nail polish remover is gonna work. And I'd recommend you just clean this whole thing, get a paper towel or a rag uh, wet with the acetone or nail polish remover, and just clean this surface really well and then in addition to that, you've got your riser. You're gonna to wanna to clean that surface really well where it's gonna contact this, uh, or this uh, tank adapter. So, whoa. So we've got the mastic in place. I'm gonna put this away so the wind quits blowing this, or trying to blow this away. Uh, and then what our next step's gonna be, so we've got everything cleaned up and we're gonna set our uh, we're gonna set our mastic on now at this point we're gonna put that all the way around set that down on the bolts we'll use our washer and then our nut 
and we'll tighten those up all the way around. Uh, you don't want to go too tight because it is plastic, so it's easy to over tighten these uh, if you give it too much torque. So basically just hand tight and then maybe just a couple of turns, you know, uh, 10 pounds or so. No nothing crazy. It's going to crack the plastic. Um, so what we're going to want to do next, once this is bolted down and in place, is uh, take your MA320. It comes as a two-part epoxy, just like this. And it's separated by this little green thing and then there's like a little plastic tube in here that's keeping these two apart. So when it's go time, you remove the green tube, pull this plastic deal off here, and then you mix them together back and forth until it's all kind of mixed together. And then you smash it all down into one half uh, and then cut a corner off um, so that you're ready to start pouring it. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do once you got this all mixed and ready to pour, corner cut off, is you use approximately half the bag and you, you may be able to see this uh, line right here, this ridge right here that runs all the way around the plastic. Uh, and you basically just wanna put a nice bead all the way around that so that um, when you set the riser down, it, it you know kind of adheres. You don't wanna go low because it doesn't always reach that low and you may not get a very good and strong seal. So assuming that we've gone all the way around and put a nice bead using about, again, half the bag, uh, we'll set this riser on. And as you set the riser on, it's good to do about a quarter to an eighth of an inch uh, or an eighth of a rotation turn if you can. Um, they tend to fit kind of snug. So you may not get much rotation out of it, but you can always attempt it. Some fit better than others. And you want to make sure it's all the way down as far as you can get it. So now you can see with this riser, uh, it didn't come anywhere near the bottom. So if I were to put that epoxy around the bottom here, expecting that riser to slide all the way down, I would have kind of been SOL. It wouldn't have been a good situation. Um, and so what we want to do next is once that's in place, is you'll use the remaining half of this epoxy right here. And you'll run on the inside of this lip here all the way around. And you'll just fill that up as best you can. Um, and then that's where that tongue depressor comes into place. You'll take that tongue depressor, get that excess material out of there, and away you go. There, there may be a little bit that kind of oozes out here. You can clean that up as well make it look nice. Uh, if you got a little bit extra uh, that's left in the bag or a little bit extra that you've kind of scooped off, you can go around the bottom here and fill in any gaps that you have if you're concerned about that. So that's going to kind of help you in the long run. And once we've got this in place, this is basically a 24 hour setup. I recommend you leave this thing a full 24 hours before you do your backfill. If you're in a hurry, uh, I think that you can do it in as little as 12 hours before you do a backfill, but ideally you would wait. That way you minimize the risk of this thing getting nudged or bumped and kind of messing up that great seal that you just worked on. And then the last step, we just need the lid. So we put the lid on. The lid has four bolts, it's super lightweight. This lid here is actually rated for uh, 2,200 pounds uh, load rating. Of course, it's not a lid that's intended to be driven on, but you know any number of people can safely walk across this thing. Super lightweight, and this is gonna be a very watertight installation, which I would recommend for anyone with a septic tank. It's gonna be environmentally friendly, and it's gonna save you money in the long run by maintaining the integrity of the system. And if you've got pumps, it's gonna extend the life of those pumps. All right, so just a really quick recap, just to run through it. Step one, go ahead and clean out the area that you're gonna be installing the plastic tank adapter. Step two, mark where you're gonna install the bolts. Step three, clean up the riser where it's gonna contact the glue as well as the ring adapter. And then step four, apply your mastic around the inner lip of the plastic ring adapter so that it's ready to bolt down. Then bolt it down using the washers and the nuts provided. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is run that bead of epoxy around that, uh, that line that we talked about, uh, about halfway up the plastic ring adapter because as you can see, it doesn't always go all the way down. And then finally, 
finally, install the, uh, the riser, give it a little bit of a rotation if you can. It doesn't always give you the, the give to do that. And then uh, run the, the remaining epoxy on the inner lip that we showed so that you can have a good, strong, tight seal. Then finally, put your lid on and you're done. The next day, it's ready to bury. So now we'll just quickly breeze through the fiberglass tank adapter installation because it's very similar. Um, so let me grab that. 